hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing well so recently i was thinking about this question am i too sensitive if you've seen my previous videos in most of them i cry <laughs> but i'm not a sad person i just feel emotions i guess deeply <laughs> I actually consider myself a pretty joyful person. However, I, I've been told before that I was too emotional or that I was crying too much. I've been asked if I was a crybaby or if... Or I ha I've had comments like, you're crying again. <laughs> It mostly came from one person that I won't name. <laughs> I've also seen videos and articles on the philosophy of stoicism and I started to wonder if my emotional sensitivity was an issue. I've never truly seen it as an issue because I don't see myself as erratic or dramatic but I'm always up for improving myself, so I'm wondering if it's something I need to work on. Spoiler alert, <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> so the other day, I was about to go to sleep and I decided to look it up. I wrote something like, I feel my emotions too strongly <laughs> on Google search. And the first link was from Psychology Today. And the name of the article was feeling intensely the wounds of being too much and that title spoke to me because I do feel like my emotions are too much for some people. In the article they talk about highly sensitive people. There was a lot of points that I could relate to in the article. And I think it's a really interesting subject. It's a pretty long article, so if you relate to the feeling of feeling too much, then I highly recommend you go through it. But a couple of things that really spoke to me are intellectually you are inquisitive and reflective. You have strong need to seek, to understand, to expand your horizons to gain knowledge and to ana and to analyze your mental content and you are highly capable of contemplative thinking and self-reflection the flip side is that you may be occupied with obsessive thoughts and scru scrupulous self-examination you may also suffer from perfectionism from perfectionism and self-criticism. I relate to these a lot. I'm very often questioning my thoughts and wondering why I think the way I think or why I act the way I act because I love understanding. I love understanding humans. <laughs> I have a certificate in psychology. I just love understanding. <laughs> to me, it's a really fascinating subject. On my computer, I have a little note with a list of labels I think I identify as and until I'm like 99% sure I will keep challenging those labels. Like for a really long time I couldn't decide whether I was an introvert or an extrovert and it really bothered me. <laughs> At first I thought I was an introvert then I thought I was a shy extrovert, but now I think I'm a shy ambivert, with, which is you have, you don't mind being alone. I really enjoy my alone time. I enjoy being alone, but
but I also really like people. So now this is what I think I am. It might change again. I don't know. And I say 99.9% .9 sure because I'm never 100% sure of anything. I always leave space for what I don't know or what I don't understand yet. Another quote from the article that I really liked was, your angst propels you to learn to expand and to advance in your life, in your life path, but it can also paralyze you. This part is pretty much what I've been going through. And the second part, you may be prone to creative blockages such as artist's block, writer's block, procrastination, check, <laughs> fear of exposure, check, <laughs> and the imposter syndrome, check. <laughs> For the fear of exposure, I think a lot of people might question that about me. People might doubt this about me because I'm exposing a lot of myself on the internet but it was a, a bigger struggle than you might think <laughs> it took me a lot to decide to start youtube it took me a lot to it took me a lot to film my first video and it took me a lot a lot <laughs> to actually post it <laughs> After I wrote the script for my first video, I had a close friend of mine read it. I always write scripts for my videos just because I need to put my thoughts in order and it helps me just say everything I want to say and not forget things and it, it allows me to just kind of have a flow and actually only a very few people in my life know about my channel. I've never shared it on my Facebook for the exact reason that I'm exposing a lot about my life and I don't necessarily want people to know everything. <laughs> and I don't exactly want people in my life to know all of my struggles. I have a personal Instagram account and a public Instagram account and one time I had this friend I had this friend that actually started following my public account and I freaked out <laughs> because I didn't want that person to watch my videos <laughs> I was I, I was kind of panicking <laughs> and I think what happened is because my personal account and my public account were following each other and Instagram probably recommended my public account to this person. So I unfollowed both. I, I unfollowed my personal account from my public account and vice versa. And I removed that person from my followers on my public account. <laughs> And also, I think in two of my videos, I talked about a certain passion of mine that I haven't disclosed of yet. Only a very few people in my life actually know what my passion is. I'm just very afraid of showing it <laughs> and to be judged on it. One clue is that it's in the artistic field. Only showed a handful of friends my passion. One time I actually cried <laughs> because I was very afraid of because I was very afraid of how the person will how the person would react. And when I was with my ex it took a long time before I could show my passion. 
I'm trying to get over that fear of judgment, but it's quite terrifying. <laughs> like showing something that's really dear to your heart and having people judge it is is kind of scary. <laughs> I'm trying to build up the courage to come out. <laughs> but yeah, in Psychology Today's article, they also talked about how highly sensitive people often feel misunderstood. And it reminded me of when I was with my ex. One time he was kind of, he was kind of mad at me and I cried. And that annoyed him because he felt like he couldn't express his discontent towards me. However, for me it wasn't... I wasn't crying to make him feel bad about being mad. I just felt really bad for disappointing him and for doing something wrong. I couldn't not cry while hearing that my actions had caused him some pain. I wasn't using my tears as a weapon. I just felt genuinely sad. Also, some people might perceive my emotions as making everything about me, but it's truly not. I just, I just get affected by things. <laughs> when I heard the news about the war in Ukraine that had started, I cried a couple of times that day. I hated the fact that we're in 2022 and this is still happening. I hate the fact that people have to go through so much pain. It's knowing that some people just have such a blatant disregard for human life. It's just deeply disgusting to me. I don't want to talk about this too much, but I'm genuinely not trying to make everything about me. I've been told before to not worry about other people because I get quite overwhelmed with all the injustices that happens in the world, but I can help it. I just care. There is a reason why I don't watch the news every day. I get overwhelmed. I can't watch violent movies or TV shows because even if it's fake, I really hate it. I, I, I can't watch. I, I really, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I just can't. Also, at the end of some of my videos, I've said if you're going through the same thing and it's always a struggle for me to say that because it makes me sad to know that other people are struggling. Anyways, reading this article was really insightful and I think it really helped me get a better understanding of myself. The thing is, I also laugh really easily and I get very happy for other people too. Recently, one of my friends invited us to her home and she announced that she was pregnant and she's a really close friend of mine and I cried. <laughs> I was and I am just so happy for her and her boyfriend. My friend's happiness makes me happy. I love seeing people happy and I love seeing people succeed. Sensitivity is also sensitivity is also at the core of arts, right? I've read this half post called Why so many artists are highly sensitive people. And there's a couple of sentences that really spoke to me. The first one is Michael Jackson embodies a personality contradiction seen in many performers. They are both incredibly out there and open 
and also highly sensitive. And another one was, but he noted that Yo-Yo Ma isn't always cheerful. He also experiences negative emotions as deeply as he does positive ones. At the end of the article, there's also a couple of questions to assess where you stand on the highly sensitive scale, I guess. <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know yet if I would label myself as a highly sensitive person, just an empath, or whatever terms I still haven't learned about. <laughs> For now, I'm kind of leaning towards being a highly sensitive person, but I keep going back and forth, and it's still a question I'm pondering and researching on. But I hope that if you've been told you were too sensitive or too much, like me, that you feel a little more understood and less guilty for having feelings. I'll leave the links to everything I mentioned below and I'll also leave a link for if you want to know more about stoicism. It's also a very interesting topic. Thank you so much for watching and and see you in my next video, maybe. <laughs> Bye. About the philosoph philosophy. Fi phil philos huh? <laughs> philosophy. 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 Huh? Philosophy. Philosophy. Phi. Lo, so, fi. Philosophy. Phil, huh? Philosophy. Philosophy. <laughs> Philosophy. <laughs> Philosophy. Ha <laughs> ha.